Hello there train sim fans and welcome to another train sim TV video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Victory Works GWR Pallier Tank Pack which is now available on the Steam Store and also on the Dovetail Games Store. So we're starting off here. We've got an auto fitted Pallier Tank locomotive at Newton Abbott on the Glorious Devon route available from DP Simulation. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick run down to Heathfield and back with this auto coach. And we're going to drive from both the locomotive on the outward journey and we'll drive from the auto coach on the So we're now ready to depart from Newton Abbott. Here we go. <coughs> Put the loco into full forward gear. And we're going to release the brakes. Prior to moving, I think we should probably check the route would be a good start. I'm just going to head along the Phil Branch down to Eiffel Station and come back. Pretty simple. Blast on the whistle. a lovely model in terms of the detail level that has been achieved. As you would expect with a Victory Works add-on. Particularly I love that inside motion, I think that's really a really nice feature and it's been very well portrayed there. Worth noting that with this pack there's a lot of different options you can choose for top feed boilers and uh, stovepipe chimneys and sparkcrestor chimneys and all sorts of different options you can choose. This is literally just uh, one that I plonked down as an auto fitted 6400 locomotive. Also included with this pack you do get the 5700. You also get the 5400, the 6400 which is what I'm driving here the 7400, the 5700, the 8750. Yeah, a variety of liveries including GWR green, BR black, uh, BR line green, BR line black, BR mixed traffic black, NCB green, London transport red, and NCB green on the GWR 8750 as well. Sounds wise, I think the local sounds fairly similar to the Riviera and 50 sound set. I don't think that's a major issue, I think it sounds pretty authentic to me. The safety valve allow, uh, for safety valve sounds certainly are allowed. That is one thing I've noticed when I've been driving this earlier. That they are virtually deafening if you have your game volume anywhere near a decent level. Injector sounds also very loud, I know. One thing I'm noticing here as I've accelerated up to speed is that I don't actually seem to be able to go above 38 miles an hour. 
I'm actually slowing down on level track now. On full regulator, which is a bit unusual. I would have fought on one coach on full regulator. It would have been taken off at this speed. I also know there's a bit of a machine gun sound there at the top end of the range, but uh, I think that up to, certainly up to 35, the sound's absolutely fine, and that's probably the sort of speed you're going to be going most of the time anyway, in all honesty. Um, so really, I don't think it's a big issue. I think a lot of people have been over-exaggerating with that. I've actually seen it on some of the forums and stuff. A bit of exaggeration on, our, on the sounds. I think they're absolutely fine for what you would, would expect and what you would pay for, or certainly I would pay for. You know, overall, the running sounds and everything sound decent enough. The bogey sounds I'm not uh, not really sold on. I'm not so sure about those, particularly on the auto coach. Those are uh, Kuju sounds from the sound of it, but local itself, I'd say, it's it's, it's all right. It's not not the best in the world, but it's certainly adequate. Oh, just come through the forest of the Heathfield branch there. It seems. So yeah, for the most part, so the sounds are alright. Modeling wise, absolutely fine. The lamps light up if you want them to, just checking that. The only slight remark I would have, possibly, is the clouding on the windows. Doesn't I'm not sold on that and for the for the sake of clarity, I have got RW enhancer on. However, I do have it turned off on the glass enhancements because I don't particularly like the glass enhancements themselves. So I've turned those off, but otherwise... Uh, this is our NW answer enabled, so it, the local itself I think looks fine in our NW answer. This is the clean version that's rather shiny, but then I would expect it to be if it was clean, if it was a very cleaned up version. The buffers look slightly lower as texture uh, as well, but other than that, I think most of the texturing is absolutely fine. Still can't get enough of that inside motion, that looks awesome. Flailing around in there. Really good. It's little smaller details like that, but to really help. I mean, look, you can actually see the uh, is it a slide bar that's called going through. You can actually see it going along that. That's pretty cool. It's something you don't see on a lot of locos. Or if you do see it, sometimes it's not particularly highly detailed. Unlike there, it is very well detailed in my opinion. So let's take a look at the cab. So in here you've got all the features you would normally expect, including all the little panels that you can pull open. As is standard on a Victory Works loco. Cab doors and everything, you can open those. Views wise, you've got the driver's view, you've got the driver's cab out view, fireman's cab out view, fireman's view, a gauge glass view, and also 3D firebox. Again, that's a pretty standard feature for VictorWorks logos, but it's a very welcome feature nonetheless. Oh, I've overfilled the boil here. Just excuse me while the engine takes a shower. So we are now on the last section up to uh, Heathfield. Cab sounds are fine. The only slight disappointment I think is that bogey noise, but uh, otherwise it's pretty decent. Cab view textures are a little bit below what I think I would expect. Uh, although having said that, they're not bad at all, it's just that's a very minor point. Plenty of whistle variety there. You've got the spacebar, 
shift and spacebar, and then control and spacebar to get these shot blasts, which is a nice uh, variation. Note you also have advanced mode, which you can control by pressing control and A. It can be toggled on and off at any time. Cab windows that close. One thing I've noticed as I'm coming along here is that I don't actually have a passenger view on the auto coach. I believe that's the same for the other auto coaches in the pack. You get four auto coaches in this pack. Um, depending on which way you look at it, I suppose you could say that's a little bit of a disappointment, but uh, it's my understanding, I think, from what I've read, that the auto coach is an extra to the pack and not necessarily the prime focus of the pack. So in that case, I suppose it's absolutely fine that it wouldn't have a passenger view when we're lucky in that respect to have it. It's nice to have it. It's, it looks fine. I'm going to take a closer look at that when we arrive at Heathfield and throw us off the back. It's our last little section with the pannier itself. Again at lower speeds, I think it sounds as you'd expect, it sounds good. Steam chest simulation's good. The regulator I note does open if you don't go to the top end of the second valve. On a Great Western engine, quite often the regulator will continue open and that's improved here as well. It's been simulated which is good. Good attention to detail. Preparing to stop here at Heathfield. Oh, I like that uh, noise there as it stops. That's quite uh, a good addition. I also like the steam coming out the eject injectors, even though the injectors are turned off. That's a nice feature. And yeah, the model itself, as I've already said, it looks absolutely and there's not really anything I would note, although I did just notice it's not entirely sure if those numbers are 2D. Shouldn't they be 3D? Perhaps, I mean, I'm not going to make a big noise about it, but I'm, I'm, I mean, you look at them from a distance, you wouldn't notice that at all, but... Yeah, I'm in detail in my eyes, it looks absolutely fine. Some of the textures, it might be harder on hands that's playing with these textures a bit, but the uh, only other texture that's a little bit low res is this buffer texture, I think. Otherwise, really nice. The detail, and as I keep saying inside, I keep going on about it because I love it so much. But I absolutely think this sort of thing is brilliant when you go to this much detail. You can see that the work and care that's gone into this pack is uh, really good. It is only let back down a little bit, I think, by some of these low textures, low res textures on the bucket and on the shovel and stuff like that. I mean, they're not major issues by any means, but they're just little niggles, I would call them. But yeah, that's something that's. Really nice. Okay, so let's take a look then at the auto coach. Change cab to the auto coach. Test the whistle to make sure I've got an auto fitted loco. You've got to make sure if you want to drive an auto coach that you pick one of the auto fitted locos. Um, it's my understanding, I know that the 6400 is, this one I'm driving here, they are auto fitted. The 5400 is also auto fitted. And I believe. They are the only auto-fitted locos that you have in this pack. The 6400s and the 5400s, I believe, all the others, and and you won't get the intended experience if you couple one of those classes of loco to this these coaches. So this is the Crimson and Cream uh, diagram A38 um, auto coach. A cool feature I did notice since I've changed the cab from the pannier tank is that the driver has appeared in the cab. He wasn't in the cab when we were driving the pannier tanks. So that's a nice little feature. Um, detailing wise, to say it's an added extra, I think this is sublime, it, it's really nice. 
it's a shame we haven't got a passenger who even just sort of sat in here even if it wasn't modeled specifically it would have been nice to just have that option of sitting in the coach but not really a massive thing so somebody could patch it if they really wanted to so we'll now take a look in the cab There's some cool little features like the doors that open windows open too and you can drag those down then you got stuff like the wipers I'm not, I'm not sure about that noise that just came from it but yeah you got the wipers there I think you can manually actually operate that with the mouse um, both the pannier and the auto coaches ok so we're now ready to depart from Heathfield and head back towards Newton Abbott we're going to release the brakes we're in now in non-advanced mode, I've released the brakes I'm just going to open the regulator and wait for the engine to, to uh, pull away once the brakes have released, got 25, 25 inches of vacuum there we go you got the whistle and the cab also operatable off the space bar as you'd expect by holding E and S or W you can move the reverser you can also operate the bell in the cab with the B key you also got the warning on as well Detailed view back there into the coach. It is just a shame about those bogey sounds. It certainly seem a little bit out of place in 2019, especially considering previous um, add ons have featured significantly better sounds uh, and I think the auto coaches from the 14XX may have sounded better but I'm not honestly sure, don't quote me on that uh, that might be wrong um, let's see if the issue is still uh, accelerated up 40 and it is very bizarre it's almost as if there's a speed limit on the local, I can't actually go with 39.9, even on full regulator I can't accelerate above that that's a little bit of an issue though, I'm not sure if that's something I'm doing or the loco to be fair. The sounds from the locos were driving along, I think they sound okay. We've got the tail lamp fitted. I know that that's a nice little feature that the driver, obviously because of the driver from the auto coach, the driver model has disappeared. Now there's a fire in the cab and that's a nice little touch good attention to detail. So we're uh, quickly heading back towards Newton Abbott. Shouldn't be too long until we get there. You have also, as I've already said, you got the wipers available in here. If you hold E you are in the cab on this you can if you're in advanced mode, the regulator operates holding A, uh, holding E, sorry. Much like the reverser does. started a moment ago. There's no steam chest push showing. That is very unusual. It seems to have stopped now. Okay, I'm really not sure what that was all about. heading on 
the final stretch now to Newton Abbott. When we get there, we'll take a look at some of the other locomotives that are included in this pack. And what must be said is a rather sizable pack as well. You certainly get a lot of uh, stuff included for your money. There's a lot of different locomotives. You do get these for, I believe it's four diagrams of um, auto coaches. All told, I think for the price, it's well worth the money. Um, you get a comprehensive manual which has 65 pages. Um, full details for driving in both auto, advanced and simple mode. On this return, we're driving in simple mode. Thing I've noticed when I'm in, um, I don't know if it's an actual issue or not, but when I'm driving from the auto coach, the exhaust from the steam loco seems to go up in the air really quite volcanically, almost as if it's got the blower turned on full, even when the blower's not turned on at all, at least not by me anyway. So I don't know if that's a TS issue, a local issue, or if it's just how it's meant to be. I believe it is like it all the time though and it's not something that's uh, to changing so that's a little unusual but it's not a major problem again. Overall I think this is a, a really nice drive though. The auto coach is, as I keep saying it is let down a little bit by the sounds but I am able to look past that. I think if I was driving it on a long journey I might lose some immersion from it but it is, as I've said before, is a, an included extra of this pack. It is not necessarily a showcase piece. I would much rather have it in this condition than not have it at all. That is, that is for certain. I, I really have, yeah, it's really nice to have it to drive. So we'll just stop here in Newton Abbott and then we'll take a look around the sidings and we'll see what we... Uh, We'll have a look at all the other models in the pack. Or at least many of the models in the pack. Okay, so in this view we have every single Pannier model that's in the pack. We don't have every variation in terms of all the top feeds and all the different um, features that each model have, but we have each model placed. As you can see, that is quite a collection. So nearest the camera we have the NCB liveried locos we also have the London transport livery example which uh, I'm actually I really like that livery I think it looks brilliant as does the NCB livery and I like the weathering on that great stuff and then you got some of the GWR ones and there's also a, an early British Railways model that you get included, you get the liveries for British early British Railways models, which is nice because it gives you that option of uh, running as if it were 1948-1949, just after nationalisation. Then you've got a large variety, and I'm not going to go through describing every single one, I'm just going to stop every so often so you can see. But there's a huge variety, there's some lovely weathered examples as well on this near line, which is always weathered livery. It's the late emblem version, 5400 class. Really nice. Uh, you have to excuse the frame rate because I have placed around 50 odd locos here. I don't know exactly how many there is, but there's an awful lot. But there's some really nice models. The livery you don't see very often is the British Railway screen. Nice. 7760, that's a preserved loco, I believe. But yeah, certainly seeing a yard full of these is pretty impressive. I'm not going to go all the way back down, but you can sort of get the idea that there's an absolute wealth of locomotives included in this pack for 15 quid. I really don't think you can go wrong, to be honest. 
it's uh, really a, a very fur pack and of course as I went through before you get the four auto coaches included as well the four models you actually get more than that in terms of the actual variations where you get four models included I think you get six variations is it or five but yeah overall I'd say this pack is absolutely well worth the money I think if I was going to give it a score I'd probably give it an 8 out of 10 I would only lock two points off just for the sounds which for me are a little bit of an issue but not not a major issue by any means I could really enjoy driving the pannier itself for long distances uh, and long turns I think I would struggle to drive the auto coach for a long time just because of the kuju sounds but again it's it's a it's an added extra so I don't know whether you would count that as a part of the pack or not but for the sake of that score I have counted it as a part of the pack um, but yeah I would I would really recommend getting this pack it's uh, it adds so much variety to the panniers that we have and it, it, it exceeds what the Riviera 50s one was by such a long way that it makes that one now completely irrelevant in my opinion um, yeah really well worth getting hope you've enjoyed the video and join us again in the near future don't forget that we're live on Twitch regularly at twitch.tv forward slash trainsimtom uh, trainsimtv underscore tom and twitch.tv forward slash trainsimtv underscore mark you can also find us on Facebook at trainsimtv and I hope you've enjoyed the video goodbye